All engines running. Certainly got a problem is you're on the phone with these great ideas you make, you got great statements, you know, you sound deep, but your life does not model anything you're talking about. Okay, listen to me, I want you to get that, because that, yeah, maybe it was deep, because you didn't respond the way I thought you was gonna respond. Watch this, you don't get out of life what you want, you get out of life who you are. Everybody wants, listen, you think the guy that's driving around in a tricked out Ford Fusion, you think that was his dream car? Like he went to four, like, let me get the tricked out fusion. This is my, I've always wanted this, right? Right? That's not what, that's not the car you wanted. You think the guy that's living in the, in, in, in the low housing income area, that's where he wanted to live? No. When he passed the gated community, he wants to be there too. Right? They, the, but the guy who lives in the gated community, who drives the car he always wanted to drive, the difference between the two of them, that one of them says certain things, this is what I want, and the other one is what he says. He is what he says. He is the, the, he, what, the words that come out of his mouth and the lifestyle that he lives, the things that he do, they are congruent. Right? That's why some rappers, like, people are like, how in the world is this rapper? Why, how's he doing what he's doing? Because he said that this is the lifestyle that he lived, right? You look at Jay-Z. Jay-Z said he did this, this, and this to get to this. And when people go back and look at his life, they're like, he did, he did that. Now there are other rappers, I won't say their names, but they got really released from the game because they claim to live a certain lifestyle. They said they did this, and then when you did homework on them, you found out they were from the suburbs. <laughs> this guy's like, I shoot, I kill, like I was in jail, and then you do this homework, he was in prep school. It's like, whoa, what happened? Right, so listen to me, I'm gonna keep it 100. I, the reason why I'm so, people like, Eric, your confidence, why do you have so much confidence? I have so much confidence because when I talk about what I'm going to talk about, I lived it. I lived it. What gives me the right? That's what I tell all my young speakers who want to speak. I say this is the number one question you better ask yourself before you do what I do. What gives you the right to address that crowd? What gives you the right? Not if you're talented, if you can speak. What gives you the right to stand before successful people? You want to speak in the NBA. What gives you the right to talk to an athlete who represents 1% of all the athletes in the world? What gives you the right to talk to him? What gives you the right to talk to a four-time NBA champion? What gives you the right? I need to look at your life and see how you, you, you got the right to talk to this guy. There's a lot of opportunities in this place. What gives you the right to earn them? What gives you the right? And when you can answer that question, there's nothing you can't have. What gives me the right? I was homeless. I slept in abandoned buildings and I own a company that's a million. We right here at the million, million mark in, in two years. What gives me the right? I'm a high school dropout who got a GED, who took 12 years to get a four-year degree, who got his master's degree. By the way, I'm a Spartan who's working on finishing up on his PhD. What gives me the right to tell you you can keep going because I kept going. That's what gives me the right. I ate from, I ate out of garbage cans. I lived in abandoned buildings and I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm an author. I'm an author. As I'm an author. I, I have the right to tell you you can do it, you can make it. Why? Because I did it. This, I'm not giving you something I read in a book. Like, I love it. You, have you ever noticed those speakers when they speak? Like, you can tell they read, they read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. <laughs> right? And they like, habit one. <laughs> I'm like, you're not, how you gonna, that's Stephen Covey. Like, he has the right. What do, what do I mean by right? Write this down, sweat equity. Sweat equity, that means Stephen Covey has the right to tell me these seven habits because he's went through sweat, blood, and tears to come up with those seven habits. Those seven habits didn't come from him sitting in the classroom somewhere. Those seven habits came from living, from life. What does it take to be successful? Can I be real with you? You can go to any bookstore and get the, what it takes to be successful. You can get that, you can go to any bookstore. Somebody wrote about it. The challenge is not what does it take. The challenge is do you have a heart to do what it tells you to do? Can you make the sacrifices? Listen to me very close. It, I guarantee you, you, there's probably a book called Success for Dummies that breaks it down real plain. But what makes a man get up at 3 o'clock in the morning versus a man that gets up just in time to go to work? It's not that the guy that has to be to work at 7 o'clock who gets up at 6.30 to be somewhere at 7. It's not that he doesn't know that if he gets up at 5 o'clock, he could probably be better. The problem is he don't have a heart to get up early. 
He don't have the discipline to get up early. It's not the knowledge that he lacks. It's the heart. And you can't go buy that at Walmart. That's why I have an advantage. People say all the time, Eric, how did you do it? You were homeless. You were a high school dropout. You didn't have the advantage. You didn't have your real father in your life. How did you do it? This guy comes from a great community. How did you do it? I said, because I, I learned the secret to success. It doesn't matter where you come from. If you come from privilege, your mama can buy you a car. They can send you to the best college in the world, but she can't make you get up and go to class. Your daddy could own everything and be a billionaire, but the drive he had to get the billions, he can't take you to Walmart and buy the drive.